Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. A little while back I made a video about the companion app for Avalon Hill's new edition of HeroQuest. In that video I talked about how overall I think it's a pretty good app, that there's still plenty of room for improvement. And with something like the companion app I do think it's important to bring up not just bugs but any areas that feel a little off or janky, like when Zargon casts spells when there are no targets, or when heroes instantly die using the pass through rock spell just because the player accidentally took their finger off the screen of their device before they were clear of the wall they were moving through. As far as I'm concerned, the more players that speak out about issues with the app and report them to Avalon Hill, the better it will be for everyone. Apps can be patched and it's generally easier to update and resolve issues in that digital space so when concerns are raised Avalon Hill can move on them making for a better experience for everyone. And it's clear to me that Avalon Hill do want the app to be as useful, robust and flexible as possible, as evidenced by a recent app update which I only became aware of this morning when the app updated to include a series of additional menu options. According to the update on the Apple Store, this latest patch fixes several bugs that have been reported and has introduced a feature that allows a player to cancel their action if they accidentally get stuck in a wall using the pass through rock spell. That's great to see, but potentially more interesting, and what this video is going to focus on, is a series of new options that have been introduced to dictate the difficulty of the game and how Zargon operates. I think it's fair to say that the AI for Zargon in the app is a little weak. Quite frequently I find myself overruling what the app has done in order to make a more informed, wiser decision that is more challenging for my heroes, unless I'm playing the Frozen Horror or the Mage of the Mirror in which case I appreciate every break I get. So to see some additional options in the app menu to tweak Zargon to be a more formidable opponent is excellent. And it should be stressed, all of these new features are entirely optional. You can switch them off or on as you see fit in any combination you desire. So every single one of these additions is a good one. You can never complain about having more customization options because if you don't like them, you just don't use them. That being said, what follows is my personal take on all of the new options and what I like or don't like about them. The first new option is Monsters Attack Weak. Simple enough, if a monster has a choice of targets, it will attack the weakest. But what does that mean exactly? I did a few tests in the app with the Dwarf and the Wizard. When the two heroes had an equal defense value of 2, the monsters favored attacking the Wizard, clearly because the Wizard only has 4 body points compared to the Dwarf's 7 body points. If I adjusted the defense value of the Wizard so it was higher than the Dwarf's, the monsters still favored the Wizard as a target, despite having a harder time hitting him. But, when I lowered the Dwarf's body points so they were below the Wizard's, all of the enemies turned their attention to the Dwarf and left the Wizard alone. The most interesting situation was perhaps when I lowered the Dwarf's hit points so they were the same as the Wizard's and set their defense values to be equal. In that case, all the enemies favored the Dwarf as a target. I'm assuming it's because the Dwarf had taken more damage than the Wizard. The Wizard was on full health, but the Dwarf had lost three body points. It was like the monsters could smell the blood in the water. And that was the same even if I significantly bumped the Dwarf's defense roll. So, in short, the app is working off body points. If there is a choice of two targets, it will go for the one with the lowest current body point score. And it seems that if two targets have the same body point score, then the app will select to attack the target that has lost the most body points already. I think that's probably a fine way to do it, but I do have some issues. Firstly, monsters will run past closer targets to reach the weaker ones further away. This can be a big concern, especially in a game that doesn't have a rule like Advanced Hero Quest Death Zones that allows miniatures to pin enemies to prevent them squeezing past. A human Zargon player can play things by ear, laying off the wizard when they feel the wizard has had enough punishment. An AI system doesn't know when to let up and will hound the wizard incessantly. I think attacking the weakest should really work in conjunction with a closest threat rule, where a monster will prioritize a closer hero but will attack the weaker or most wounded hero when two targets are equally close. The other issue with this function is that it becomes more important to track all your wounds in the app. At the moment I tend not to use the wound and stat tracker functions in the app because by noting those details on paper character sheets I can spend less time looking at my device. Using this new option in the app necessitates using the built-in trackers as otherwise the app has no way of knowing which hero should be the target. Next up we have two fun additions, Advanced Goblins and Advanced Skeletons. Advanced Goblins seem to have the ability to split their movement, so rather than moving then attacking or attacking then moving, they can move into range, attack and then use the rest of their movement to scarper. This makes them feel much more goblin-like. 
they can perform hit and run tactics, poking a hero and then dancing back out of range in an infuriating manner. It also means they can get out of the way to allow their allies to get into range to make additional attacks. For example, if you are standing in the doorway to a room containing four goblins, every one of those goblins will be able to attack, rather than just one goblin standing in the doorway while the others hang around behind it like baddies in a Bruce Lee movie. The advanced skeletons are very cool because they actually turn into the skeletons from Advanced Hero Quest, gaining the ability to use their scythe to poke at heroes diagonally. This really helps to mitigate the common heroic tactic of standing in a doorway so you can only face one attack at a time, as now you could potentially face up to three attacks, with skeletons getting in on the action from diagonally adjacent spaces. I really like these new rules. I think you need to apply them with caution in the tougher quests, like Frozen Horror, as you will already be under enough pressure but it's really nice to see monsters using fresh tactics. I have said before that it would be cool if Avalon Hill released a creature pack with variations of core game monsters. For example, goblin archers with ranged attacks, goblin spearmen with diagonal attacks, orc berserkers with two attacks, and orc bruisers with additional armor. These advanced rules do feel a bit like that, although of course they are applied to all enemies of a given type. Next up we have doubling wandering monsters. Pretty standard. When you trigger a wandering monster event, you get double the monsters you normally would. Fair enough, but this isn't something I would personally introduce in my games, for a couple of reasons. First, wandering monsters can already be quite punishing. They get to attack immediately, and if they survive to the end of the hero phase, they get to attack again. Second, because wandering monster treasure cards are shuffled back into the deck each time you draw them, they turn up quite regularly in most quests, and it's already the case that if you're a bit unlucky, the frequency of wandering monsters can start to drag the pace of the game down. If each of those encounters involves twice as many enemies, that's just going to exacerbate the issue. For me, Hero Quest is always at its best when it's pacey and punchy, where the heroes are constantly opening doors, finding new enemies, collecting new treasure, and moving the story forwards. Being stuck in drawn out random combats isn't really a big selling point for me. And third, once you get to the Frozen Horror and the Mage of the Mirror expansions, every Wandering Monster treasure card pull or Wandering Monster trap already spawns two enemies. Who here fancies getting ambushed by four Abominations or four Dread Warriors at once? And you better thank your lucky stars there are only two Warbear miniatures in the Frozen Horror box. I honestly don't think there's any need to double up on an already pretty serious whooping, so once you reach these campaigns, I would definitely recommend switching off the Double Wandering Monsters feature, even if you felt you needed it for the earlier expansions. Finally, there are four options for making all of the foes you face tougher. You can give monsters plus one body point, plus one mind point, plus one attack, and plus one defense. I know there are some people who are going to want to switch on all four of those options straight away. I often see complaints of earlier monsters being glass cannons, for example, but at most I think I would use two of these options. I wouldn't want to give monsters extra body points. It seems like it could be a good idea in theory. Those goblins, orcs and skeletons often don't stick around long enough to make a significant impression. But as I've already mentioned, I think Hero Quest is at its best when it stays fast and fluid. I want the game to keep moving so it doesn't outstay its welcome. Long, drawn-out, knockdown fights between the heroes and basic scrubs doesn't sound too appealing. I like to see my heroes barrel through a room of goblins, gaining in confidence before suddenly coming face to face with dread warriors who aren't quite such pushovers. Furthermore, as someone who plays the rogue heir, I think that once you take away the one body point enemies, you seriously hamper the rogue's ability to be a useful member of the team. Those follow-up dagger attacks that can bypass armor are an excellent tool for thinning the ranks of orcs and goblins, and I wouldn't want to see that being lost for the sake of keeping minions in play for longer. The wizard's fire spells also become even weaker than they already are. And of course, it goes without saying, enemies like the war bears, yetis, and giant wolves really don't need a hike in their body points. They already require a concerted effort for the heroes to take them down. I think an option to increase the body points of named villains might be good though. Some characters that are built up to be a frightening foe crumble like cracker bread. Increasing mind points doesn't initially sound like it would make much difference. For the most part, it only impacts a few things like the success rate of the sleep and hypnotic blaze spells. But I grew up playing the European version of Hero Quest where the wizard was a badass. The poor spellcaster was already nerfed for the North American version of the rules, and I really don't see the need to nerf them anymore. Plus one attacks is something I think could be good in some situations. 
Often, hero quest is about action economy. When you open a door to reveal enemies, your heroes have to make the most of the actions available to them to remove those monsters from play before they have a chance to activate. The aim is to clear your area before Zargon has a chance to capitalize on weight of numbers. Giving monsters extra attack dice adds additional risk. If you let monsters loiter, you are facing a much higher chance of taking damage, and even a lowly goblin has the potential to seriously hurt you. That extra threat can add just enough tension to expansions like Keller's Keep to ensure heroes are always on their toes. It's also an incentive to push into a room and take down enemies rather than sitting back in doorways and waiting for them to approach you. But again, you absolutely don't want to have this option switched on when you are playing something like the Frozen Horror. A polar warbear making two five dice attacks is absurd. Finally, you have the option to give enemies one extra defense dice. I prefer this idea to giving them one extra body point, because while it does help them to stick around for a little longer, their survival still relies on dice rolls, and therefore you aren't negating the strength of follow-up attacks that can bypass armor rolls. In fact, extra defense only makes a character like the rogue more important to the team. This, for me, is the best way to improve the survivability of enemies if you feel the heroes are wading through them too quickly. But there we go, that's just a quick rundown of the new options. As I said before, I think it's good those options are there, even though for the most part I won't be using them. It's great to see Avalon Hill continuing to build on the app, adding features and improving performance based on community feedback. It's nice to know that HeroQuest continues to get the attention it deserves. But let me know what you think in the comments because that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.